All right, guys, welcome to another video. This is lesson three in the home learning lessons. Now, if you haven't already seen lesson one, lesson two, please do check them out after this video. Now, guys, lesson one was question two. Lesson two was question three. Lesson four, we're going to begin looking at paper one, question four. Now, the resources you need, as always, are in the description box. So please make sure you go and click on them. Uh, like and share and subscribe if you haven't already. Now, guys, let's begin. So, guys, today we're looking at question four. Now question four, if you look at the exam guys, question four is worth 20 marks. Now 20 marks means you spend a total of 20 minutes on this particular question. Now in the 20 minutes, you're aiming to produce four paragraphs. Therefore, doing the maths, guys, it's five minutes per paragraph. That is the skeleton of the question. So that is what you must know before we do anything with it. So guys, it's 20 marks, 20 minutes, four paragraphs, five minutes per paragraph, which is pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Now guys, one thing you must bear in mind, this question is a massive question. It's worth 20 marks. Yes, so it's the second most valued question in the entire exam. So therefore we have to give it the attention it deserves. Now, there's a few things that I wanna go over the question, but first let's read the question. Guys, question four, you might wanna pull it up in front of you so you can follow me as I go along. For this question, look at the whole text. After reading the section of the text, a student said, this, the passage is effectively written in the first person. The narrated description is very real and fills the reader with horror. So guys, there's two things that we're looking at. Is the description real and does it fill the reader with horror? These are the two elements that have, uh, that have arisen from the question. Now the question says, to what extent do you agree? Guys, the word extent, it means how much. The question, this is very important to understand guys. The question doesn't say, do you agree or do you disagree? The question says, to what extent do you agree? Meaning, how much do you agree? Guys, every single time we do question four, I want you all to always strongly agree. The way the question is set up, it's easier to agree than disagree. But we can't say we agree because we haven't said the extent of our agreement. Therefore, we always say we strongly agree. Therefore, guys, we produce four paragraphs talking about how we strongly agree. Now, people always say, do you have to do a paragraph where you show that you disagree? No, you don't have to. And that's going to be my simple and short answer on that. I may talk about it more later, but at the moment, guys, we are aiming for four paragraphs about how we strongly agree. Now, let me kind of rub off, this, rub off the text on the board so I can make... So I can start planning the question. Guys, if you didn't make notes, you might want to rewind the video, you might want to pause the video and make these notes before I move on because we are going to be moving pretty quickly. All right, guys, so that is the backdrop of the question. Now, how do you structure each paragraph? Guys, the structure of the paragraph, they've given it to us in the bullet points. Let's read the bullet points. In your response, you can write about your own response. Your own response, guys. This is your point. Your point is your own response. Meaning, what do you think? How do you think the writer creates horror? How do you think the writer makes it feel real? Let's go to the third bullet point. The third bullet point says, support your opinion with reference to the text. Guys, that basically means evidence. You must refer to the text. So you give your point and you give your evidence. Bullet point number two. Evaluate how the writer has used the first person narration in the extract. Evaluate how. Guys, the how is always technique. The how, guys, is always technique. Meaning, language technique and structural techniques. Now, guys, at this point, if you're not sure on what language and structural techniques are, I would say go back and watch Home Learning Lesson 1 and home learning lesson two, because both of those lessons I covered in lesson one, language techniques, lesson two, structure techniques. Question two and three, which were covered then, are a build up to question four. Now we bring it all together. So guys, you've got your point, you've got your evidence, you've got your technique. The last thing you do is you explain the effect of the technique. So essentially, if you guys know somebody called Pete, you're writing a Pete paragraph. That is essentially what you're doing in this essay. You're doing four P paragraphs over and over and over and over again. The most important part of the paragraph, guys, the most important part of the paragraph is the explanation because this is where you show the examiner 
what you're made of and what your views are. So guys, let me reiterate, 20 marks, 20 minutes, four paragraphs, five minutes each, five, sorry, four P paragraphs. You give your point, you give your evidence, you find a technique in the evidence, and then you explain the effect of that technique. Now, I am not gonna read the whole extract again because I've read the extract already quite a few times. And by now, if you've been here since lesson one, you should have read the extract also. So let's go straight into it. The question says, we are looking at, does it, does it seem real? And does it create horror? Guys, let's start with, let's start with, let's start with horror. Let's start with horror. I want to go to, I want to go to paragraph one, two, three, four, five, six, line 19, paragraph six. I'm going to read and then we're going to pull out the answer. Of course, I ought to have expected that. Guys, that's the extract. If you haven't got it in front of you, please pull it up. Of course, I ought to have expected that. Only I didn't. It came to me as an absolute, for a moment, an overwhelming shock. It seemed as though it wasn't a face, as though it must need a mask, a horror. Sorry, as though it must needs be a mask, a horror, a deformity. A mask, a horror, a deformity. We have our rule of three. So guys, we have our rule of three. All right, guys, let's plan our paragraph. Let's plan our paragraph and then we kind of fill in the gaps. So, how does the writer make how does the writer make the text seem real? How does the writer create horror? All right, evidence we're going to use, guys. Our evidence is line 21, where it says, uh, where it says, a mask, a horror, a deformity. The technique here, guys, is rule of three. And guys, don't forget, rule of three is when you have three phrases or three adjectives in a row, to describe something. So if I said that this jumper is black with a white logo and it's a fleecy material, that's rule of three. It adds more detail. If I said it's black, you don't get much from it. So the writer has given, given us more detail about whatever they're talking about. It needs a mask, it's, it's scary, and there's something deformed about the way it looks. Um, the writer has used a rule of three. What's our point? Our point is that the writer creates horror through specific detail. All right guys, that's the easy part of the paragraph done. Now, when it comes to the explanation, I will do that when I do the exemplar paragraph on the board. All right guys, that's one paragraph planned for you all. This paragraph guys is talking about horror. So let's say you're planning four paragraphs. You want two paragraphs about horror and two paragraphs about how the writer makes everything seem so real and so uh, as though you're there with the character. I've done one paragraph on horror. Guys, I'm gonna give you maybe 10 minutes. Can you pause the video and can you spend 10 minutes planning the next three paragraphs just like that? Forget the bottom part, don't do the explanation, but can you plan the top part? So can you find a quote? Can you find a technique in the quote? And can you find a point that you can make about that quote? How does the writer either create horror or how does he make things seem real? Guys, take 10 minutes, maybe pause the video. Um, off you go. All right, guys, now you should have four paragraphs planned in front of you with point, evidence, technique, point, evidence, technique, point, evidence, technique, four times. That is all you need. But now we must produce our paragraph. Now guys, if you've been here from lesson one and lesson two and lesson three, you now should be getting into the habit of the kind of way we produce our paragraphs. So we're gonna produce the paragraph that I planned earlier. Now I can't remember word for word what was in that plan because like an idiot, I rubbed it off. But I'm gonna to try to remember um, based upon the quote. So guys, let's go for it. Uh, you always start with, I strongly agree that the so guys i made it very clear from the very beginning what extent i agree and my extent is strongly i strongly agree that the writer i strongly agree that the writer creates a sense of horror in the extract 
that's my point and that's my point complete. Now I'll move on to my evidence or my technique, whichever one I want to do first. I'll do my evidence first. This is illustrated. This is illustrated when the face is described as a mask, a horror, a deformity. God, this is my technique. The use, next part guys, the use of rule of three. The use of rule of three, that is my technique. All right guys, point, sorry guys, that is not a T, that should be an E. Uh, guys, this here should be an E. It's my evidence, it's not my technique. I hope if you're watching at home, you corrected me before I corrected myself. All right, guys, I strongly agree that the writer creates a sense of horror in the extract. Point done. This is illustrated. This is illustrated the face. This is illustrated when the face. This is illustrated when the face is described as a mask, a horror, a deformity. The use of rule of three. All right, guys, this is where I literally want to fill up the entire board with just one color, and this is my explanation. This is the most important part. The use of rule of three brings this face alive. Bit by bit, the writer slowly lifts the veil of curiosity no, this one you can see. List the veil of ambiguity from this character. However, by the end of the rule of three, of the rule of three, they are still lots of questions unanswered unanswered um, the adjectives horror and deformity uh, the adjectives horror and deformity link to the semantic field of so that horror and deformity link to the semantic field of 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 of, of unusualness. No, 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 no. Let's not go for that. Uh, link to the semantic field of horror and deformity. It's the idea that things are unusual. Link to the semantic field of everything being unusual as a result the horror the horror the horror the horror of the face is amplified Okay, let's read it and let's see if it makes sense. I apologize for my writing, hence why I was reading it as I went along. All right, guys, I strongly agree that the writer creates a sense of horror in the extract. This is illustrated when the face is described as a mask, a horror, a deformity. The use of rule of three brings this face alive. Why does it bring the face alive? Because we have three words in a row, three adjectives. We don't say the face is ugly. It's not that. The writer adds one more detail. And then one more detail, making it three. Uh, bit by bit, the writer slowly lifts the veil. What do I mean by that? By adding a little bit of information, and then a little bit more, and a little bit more, bit by bit, very slowly, we, it's revealing to us what is this character like. Lift the veil of ambiguity from this character. However, by the end of the rule of three, there are still lots of questions unanswered. 
the adjectives horror and deformity link to the semantic field of everything being unusual. Guys, what I mean by that is this. If I said to you that I saw a person who was deformed, what does that mean? That's such an ambiguous term. What was wrong with them? Was the arm, their leg, their head, their eyes, their nose? What was the deformity? By just telling us that there's a deformity, it's not clear. Therefore, it makes us think of loads more questions. As a result, I link it back to the question. As a result, the horror of the face is amplified. All right, guys, I've been through question two. I've been through question three. I've been through question four. I hope, I really do hope that you've benefited from these three lessons covering these three questions. Now we're going to move on to the big, big question. That's the 40 mark question. And I probably will not cover that in one video. That will probably take two, maybe three videos to cover. Guys, this is what I need you all to do. I've done one paragraph on the board and I planned one paragraph. You all should have planned four paragraphs. Guys, can you take 15, 20 minutes after I end the video? And can you complete the entire question? Once you've completed it, can you please email Mr. EE and Mr. EverythingEnglish.com and I will try my best to have a look at it. If you can't email guys, drop me a DM on Instagram and I'll try to give you guys some feedback um, about the work you produce. Guys, I will end the video here. Um, as always guys, it's been Mr. Everything English. If you haven't already, make sure you click on the subscribe button down below. Take care of yourselves. Peace.